Hello and welcome to What the Papers Say. I'm Tom and this is our review of the week's news as seen by the newspapers. In the news this week, controversy in the courtroom as a violent youth was allowed to run free as Dennis Dawson, uh, Denise Dawson, the victim of this attack, was deemed too honest to give evidence. I believe the Sun put it best when they said, Justice has gone mad. Judge throws robbery case out. Victim is too honest. Yes, in a strange turn of events, Judge James Tabor QE allowed, e allowed Yob, Liam Perkins, to walk free even, if, even after he had been positively identified by the victim. Unusual, but keep in mind that this is a judge who also wants... Freed a pervert choir, ma choir master saying his 11-year-old victim seemed to enjoy being abused. I wonder if Denise Dawson enjoyed being punched in the face. I'm guessing no. After being beaten and robbed by several youths, the niece was given a £250 award for her courage and the case was shut, allegedly within 24 hours. Perkins appeared to be chatting on a social networking site under the alias Not Guilty Bruv. When I think you'll find you're guilty of at least one crime, Liam, poor grammar. And that's a crime that hurts us all. Anyway, the Times managed to keep a positive slant on things, speaking of how highly the victim spoke of the judge. He was fantastic. Oh yes, woe well betide any fault with the system. Clearly the fault lies solely with the victim. Shame on you, Denise. Maybe next time you should get yourself a little less convincingly beaten and things might go your way. For the next story, that's it in the papers. You could say that all the residents of New Haven, East Sussex, woke up with wood this morning. And by that, I do mean timber. It seems to be an annual tradition now for debris to be shed from its carrier. And at this time last year, it was a Greek ship shedding its cargo. But this year, it was 1,500 tons of, uh, tons of timber that were spilled just 14 miles off the coast of New Haven by a Russian ship called the Synagorsk. The carrier was caught in rough waters with gale force winds forcing the debris to form a raft of timber, which if we take a look at the Guardian with the title, Shiver me timbers, ship spills wood in channel. An MCA spokeswoman said, it may actually avoid the coastline entirely and go on up through the Dover Strait. The Daily Mail took a more light-hearted approach to the incident with the title Timber Galore, Anyone Need a New Shed? Then went on to comment on the predicted destination of the timber, stating The timber was floating further east than originally predicted and was heading towards Kent but could travel on up through the Dover Strait. We we'll take a look at the Daily Express. The Coast Guard said the wood slick was likely to wash up on the south coast. So, as no one really knows the exact stop-off location of all this timber, no doubt someone in York will wake up tomorrow morning with everything they need to open a new franchise of B&Q. Now we all remember when we were young and we were given classic advice such as don't stick your limbs out the window of a moving vehicle, but perhaps things aren't as bad as we all were led to believe. Evan Re Reynolds, a student from Bristol, has discovered that after a horrific accident, things aren't all that bad, as he has been fitted with a state-of-the-art robotic prosthetic Lad with the bionic hand. Is how the journalist at the Mirror decided to report the poor boy's misfortune and subsequent Lee Majors-esque resurgence. The people at the Guardian, however, decided to show how life-changing this amazing leap forward in technology was. Bionic arm helps student get back into normal life and peeling carrots. Yet this too, yet this too fails to capture the emotional turmoil that the 19-year-old student has obviously been through, but only just. When asked about the accident in which Evan lost his left arm as it rested casually out of the open window of his friend's car, he says, It was very nasty. It was amputated in a second. So after watching the television report on a Scottish prosthetic manufacturer, Evan's old, older brother contacted the company and after months of tests, Evan was fitted with a £10,000 arm and mastered its use in seconds. So what does Evan think of his new arm and his new lease of life? I forgot how cool it is, then I show people how it works and wow! This is one case where I feel that the papers have failed to capture just how an accident affects someone and just how life-changing technology can be. Then again, on the other hand, I may be wrong. Well, that's all the time we have for this week. So, from me, Tom, I bid you good night.